Welcome to Basic Curves in Photoshop. I'm Lee Veris, your host for this conceptual tutorial. This short tutorial will examine basic curve shapes and we'll see how to avoid highlight and shadow clipping, how to add contrast, how to reduce contrast, and finally we'll see how we can make isolated local adjustments using a layer mask with curves. So here in Photoshop, I have a uh, grayscale image. It's a, it's a full range image that has uh, whites, midtones, uh, blacks. Uh, and I have put a, a step wedge here at the bottom, which goes in 10% uh, increments from black to white. Now I'm going to put a curve on here and we're going to start examining how the curve affects the image. So I'll just click on uh, create a new curves adjustment layer here. And here's my curve. Now the curve is is really a, a, a representation of where the image is now and where it's going. So we have we have two uh, uh, ranges that go from black to white and black to white here. So in a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship where there's no change, you have a straight line that goes diagonally across like this. Now if I take the end point which would be the white point here, and I move it to the left, the image gets lighter and lighter. Okay, because we're now remapping this gray tone down here to the white. And so the curve gets steeper. When, this, when the curve is steeper, you have more contrast. And if we take from the end uh, move it the other way to the right the black point moves move it over we get more and more contrast until the line is completely vertical and we have just black and white so there's only two tones in the image we have black down here and white and you can see what's happened we've compressed all the tones in that step wedge to either white or black here okay so if we move from the from just the the black side over you can see that we're, we're starting to lose distinction between these tones this is called clipping right so we have some gray tones here uh, if I move that endpoint over I start to clip the gray tones to black and if I keep going, the image gets darker, but we start losing detail in the shadows. And the same thing on the highlight side. If I move this point over, we start clipping tones to white. So that's highlight clipping and shadow clipping. So typically the way to avoid that, if we wanted to increase the contrast without clipping highlights or shadows, is to put what's known as an S-curve, where we kind of make a, a sort of gentle S in the curve and we get more contrast but you see here uh, I'm not clipping either ends by by this but what happens with the curve is we make it more uh, steep in the middle we get a lot of contrast in the midtones so there's some tonal distinction these tones get further apart and the highlight tones, though, get closer together, and the shadow tones are almost merging here uh, because this part of the curve up here is more horizontal. It's more horizontal down here. So there's less contrast in the highlights and the shadows. Okay. So if we make more contrast, we make the curve more vertical. Here, the whole curve is getting more vertical, and we're clipping end tones. Okay. If we go the opposite direction and go more horizontal with it, you see we get a, a more gray appearance, and the, the the tones become actually closer together, and so there's less tonal distinction. And they're all a shade of gray now because the, the line is mostly horizontal. It's more horizontal. If we, if we go all the way to horizontal, we'll just end up with a gray image. You know, no tonal distinctions at all. Okay. So by doing this S-curve, we're trying to avoid clipping the highlights and the shadows, and we're increasing the contrast. 
but because this portion of the curve is more horizontal, there's less tonal distinction in the shadows. So we're getting less shadow detail this way. We're getting kind of more separation in the midtone. So I'm going to just turn the, the curve on and off. I can either use this little eye here. So that's without the curve, that's with the curve. And look at this region here, these two tones. When we, when we uh, apply the curve, there's more contrast in here. They, they sort of get further apart. They're closer together here, they're further apart here. There's a greater tonal distinction between these tones. But less over here and less over here. Turn it on and off. Now, if we make the curve in the center more horizontal, let's watch what happens here. So we've got an inverted S curve, and it has a has a flatter look, but we get more distinction in the shadows and the highlights. I'm turning it on and off. You can see this tone gets darker, and it's the one that's closest to white. And then this tone gets lighter, it's closest to black, and so we get better separation of tones in the highlights and the shadows with this inverted S-curve. Okay, so so far we've just been applying the curve globally over the whole image, but we can also use the layer mask. See, right now we have a white layer mask for this adjustment. We can use the layer mask to isolate where the curve is being applied. So for instance, if I turn this on and off, I, I think I kind of like what's happening in the face with the way this curve shape, what, what it's doing here, but I don't like it anywhere else. So what I'm going to do now is invert this mask. So I hit Command or Control I, and I can turn that mask to black. So now the black mask has hidden uh, this curve. So it's hidden the curve adjustment. So it looks like I'm not applying the curve. So what I'm going to do now is get a paintbrush, and I've got the mask targeted here. You can see the little extra lines around it here. So I'm going to be painting with white into this layer mask over the regions uh, that I want that effect applied to. So I'm going to, I'm going to try doing this to his face only. So I'm just going to paint with my brush. Uh, we'll get the opacity up to 100%, and I'm just going to paint it in over his face. I'll leave everything else untouched because I'm just painting um, in the layer mask that's protecting uh, the rest of the image except for where I am painting with white. It's protecting the rest of the image from this adjustment. So now you see I've applied that adjustment. And whenever we work with a layer mask, it's always a good idea to check it so I'm going to solo the layer mask by option or alt clicking on this thumbnail. And now I can see uh, I can see where I might have left holes in the mask. So I'm going to work on those. So I could just fill, fill in all the holes. Then option or alt clicking again on the layer mask brings me back to the, uh, the combined image. So there's that local adjustment just affecting one area of the image. So there you have the basics of uh, using a simple curve on a grayscale image. Uh, it becomes more complicated when we start dealing with color, but at least you know now the uh, basic shapes and how they affect the image.